Let's go and now look at the other side of the conversation, which is what's happened in America. How is it likely to play out in Ghana? What kind of history do we have together when it comes to elections? Joining me in studio now is founder and CEO of N Analyst, EN Analytics and Consulting Limited, Ebenezer Nimako Nyako. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, maybe you can draw a bit yeah. closer to us. Thank you for your time. You. To start with, uh, what are your initial thoughts? First of all, you're also known as someone who plays with numbers and statistician. Exactly. What are your thoughts on the American elections, first of all, and the kind of numbers coming out? I personally wasn't too much surprised. That Trump won? Yes, that he, that, that, that he won. Okay. Yes, Why because so? if you look at the maybe real clear politics average of polls, okay, by the election day he was, I mean, neck and neck with Clearly. Hillary. Mm -hmm. And even when you go to 2016, 2020, when Clinton and Biden were ahead of him, I mean, he did very well in the swing states mm. because of the Electoral College. Mm. And this time that he was very close with uh, uh, Kamala, I believe that it was more likely that he was going to win the, the, mm. the, the, the presidency. And could it have been the, just the issues he promised the people, or these are people just being conservative Americans? No. America, currently, their number one issue is the economy, number two is the economy, and probably the number three is maybe immigration-related issues. Right. Many believe that, I mean, they were better off under Trump. So, I mean, technically, that is what, that, that is what happened. Okay. Now, we know that there are key similarities between what happened in the U.S. and in Ghana. We know, for instance, that there are blue states that are predominantly just people who vote for the, uh, the, the, the Democrats. And in Ghana, we also know that there are key regions that no matter what you do to them, they are likely to vote for a particular party. Ashanti region, NPP. Volta region, NDC. In the U.S., we know, for instance, California, almost always voting for the uh, Democrats. So what are the inferences you can make here from what's hap what happened there and what happened in Ghana? No. When it comes to the voting pattern, technically, the U.S. and Ghana, they mimic each other. You have three separate blocks. So okay. you have a uh, GOP block, that's the uh, deep red state or red states, mm -hmm. the blue states, and then the swing states. Mm -hmm. When you come to Ghana, I mean, that the story is the same. You have regions that vote for MPP, no matter what, regions that vote for NDC, no matter what. And then you have two regions, Greater Accra Central. They are the swing regions in Ghana. Mm. So we have the national graph of Ghana. Mm. Now, it is only central and greater Accra that mimics the national graph. So you okay. see that, for example, since 1992, it is only central region that has a 100% record of electing the presidency. Only central region? Only central region that has that record of electing the presidency every time. In other words, at the end of voting in Ghana, whoever Ghana is president has, must have won central region. Exactly. Okay. Cent Not Greater Accra? Central and Greater Accra used to be the same. Okay. But the last election, the, depa the departure came changed. in 2020, yes. 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 where... I mean, uh, Greater Accra went for the NDC and then uh, Central went for, for the MPP. Wow. That has been the only time, okay. apart from now, since, since, since uh, 1992, uh, they, they are always uh, voting together. Yes, and uh, on our screens now, we can see the voting pattern of the Central Region, like you indicated, mm -hmm. right through from 96. Okay. When NDC won, they okay. won the region and won the national elections. In 2000, 2004, okay. the NPP won and won the central region and by extension won the national elections. 2008, 2012, NDC won, that's John Evans at Tamil, 2012 uh, NDC, that is um, um, John Mahama. Clearly you can tell that in the central region, the party that won the region won the day. So your analogy is right. And in 2016 and 2020, the central region has remained constant like you said. 2016-2020, MPP won, and that is what uh, is showing here, that they won the region and won the national polls. But it is only Greater Accra that we are sure 
uh, played a different dynamic, especially in 2020. So, yeah. per your analysis, if you can walk us through this, per your analysis, in, 20, in 2000, 2004, NDC, uh, MPP won. John Kufo won those two elections. 2008, 2012, NDC won. But this is where the change happened. And that is why you are saying that the Greater Accra put up a different characteristic in, two, in 2020. So they cannot be say, uh, they cannot be called a swing region. So well, called. it is a is swing, it? swing region. I think it's the numbers there. Okay, mm. the numbers. I mean, you look at the margin between the NDC and the NPP in 2020, it wasn't that much. Mm. But central region was, is also still a determining factor because yes. it's also a swing region. But the difference is that mm. the region that he, he say, and, mm. and I'm, I'm sure that you, you can speak for yourself, which mm. is that the, the region that won, the party that won the central region became the party of the day. Yeah. But in 2020, Greater Accra cannot be said to be a swing region because of the dynamics that happened. Right? No, it's still a, it's still a swing it's, region. It's, a, it's still a swing region. So, mm -hmm. what happens is that whoever wins Greater Accra automatically wins Central. That has been the pattern from 1992. Okay. They are twins. They go together. If you are winning Central, you are winning Greater Accra. If you are winning Greater Accra, you are winning Central. Mm. And so, anybody who has become president has won these two regions at the same time. But that changed slightly okay. in 2020, exactly just like you in said. in 2020, mm. that is where the separation came. Mm. Okay. okay. But their swing nature hasn't changed. Mm. What it means is that they continue. It's, it's like, apart from Central, mm -hmm. they are the next best region in uh, electing uh, our presidency. Mm. So you realize that, apart from Central and Greater, all the other regions have characteristics or graphs that do not mimic the national pattern. Mm. So it is the swing nature of Greater Accra and Central that is able to give the shape of the national graph that we, we, we see in that way. Right. Without Central and Greater Accra, for example, when you go to Ashanti, I mean, MPP is way up, NDC is way down, mm. but the, 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 the margins in Ashanti is able to cover that of voter and other related religions that NDC will win. Mm. So at the end of the day, it will only come to those two regions, no matter what happens, mm. who will eventually determine who becomes the, 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 the president. So the, essentially what you're saying is that in our part of the world, it's about the popular votes. Exactly. So, so that is why the NP, NDC can win about six, seven regions exactly. and still not win the presidency. Exactly. And then the NPP will just hold on to two, three regions and still win the presidency because of the numbers that are concentrated in these regions. particular regions. Actually, in the mm. last election, mm. NPP won six of the 16 regions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, NDC had eight, okay, and the two are, are the swing regions. Mm. Yeah. So in Ghana, we also have uh, something similar to that of the US, mm. where we have six that can be t termed as a NPP aligned, uh, eight that can be termed as NDC aligned, mm. and two that are swing, that determines who become uh, the presidency. Mm. Just like we have in the U.S., where seven states uh, determine uh, the, pres the president for the entire country. Mm. And like you indicated, this is a, the, the, the voting pattern of the Ashanti region. You can tell the, the gap difference. Exactly. So although the NDC can get some good numbers from the Volta region, numbers from the Ashanti region can, you know, dwindle the amounts we are getting from the Volta region. Exactly. And it tells you clearly if you compare this, you can tell that these graphs are even a lot closer, but the Ashanti region is wide apart. However, in 2020, almost every graph we have seen, irrespective of the region, they seem to be either converging or getting closer. What is your projection going into 2024? Will the Greater Accra region mimic what it did in 2020, you believe? The interesting thing about Greater Accra is that it is the first time in its history that it has voted against an incumbent government after the first four years. Right. Okay. Right. And so probably that could be a warning sign on the war for the ruling party mm. because it has never happened before. Mm. It votes in tandem with Central and they give each uh, government eight years. Right. So for, the, for Greater Accra to give the, the present administration uh, only four years and voting for the NDC in the year 2020, it tells you that 
Greater Accra was expecting something probably bigger mm. than uh, what uh, they got within the first four years. Well, Martin, there's another yeah. parallel here. Um, in the United States, just like Ghana, we have a certain vice president who wanted to take over from her boss. Same place in Ghana here. We have a former president who was booted out who wants to come back to power. These are the similarities here. How do you think it's going to play out? I think the dynamics of the U.S. and Ghana elections, I mean, you can describe it as uh, twins now. Because it's very not, similar. I mean, not even this election cycle, but you look historically. Mm. Every time there's a change in one government, there's, there is that mm. transitional mm. or uh, a rev uh, 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 something we call uh, a transitional arrangement mm. that okay. is able to... Uh, go through the system. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm trying to use a statistical term that um, I, I always try to and, use. And, and it. Based on the polls in America, yes. it all came down to the economy. Yes. If it's going to come down to the economy here in Ghana, yeah. how's it going to look like? I think that it is even more dire now when it, in Ghana than in, in the US. Dire? Yes, because if you look at the last eight years, Okay, you look at depreciation, you look at inflation related exchange rate pressures, you look at all these uh, related issues, Galamse. So, the things relating to the economy are much more grievous mm. in our circumstances, probably in the United States. Right. And right. so, right. we don't know what the outcome will be, but what we know is that patterns are difficult to change. Mm. That is what I would say. Well, it's interesting that here at your election command center, all we do is bring you the numbers and help you make sense of it. And we're going to be doing a lot more of this as we inch closer to the December 7 polls. Just 31 days to go, your election command center will definitely be doing that.